we have a trade coming in right now from our Adrian Wojnarowski. The Brooklyn Nets are trading James Harden to Philadelphia for the 76ers. Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, and two first-round picks. That's according to Woo! our Woj. Ken what is your immediate Woo! reaction to that, Maxie. Big Rich? No, it is no, no right Maxie. now the no details. No the details. No One more time. For the trade, the Brooklyn Nets, they are trading James Harden to Philadelphia for Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, Woo. and two first-round picks, sources tell ESPN. The Nets are including Paul Millsap in the deal, too. Woj is just reporting. What do you think of this trade, Rich? I think this is a, I think this is a very good trade. It, it's still everything always hinges on Kyrie. If Kyrie comes back and you have an elite score with Kyrie, you have an elite score with Kevin Durant, and then you have a guy in Ben Simmons who can distribute but is also an elite defender, and now you have that shooting. With Joe Harris out this year and has been struggling, his ankle's probably a lot worse than what they know. It kind of reminds me of the Bucks going to try and get Serge Ibaka because they know Brooke Lopez might not be back. Seth Curry now adds to more space for Kevin Durant and, and uh, for Kyrie Irving. But everything hinges on Kyrie Irving. Irving. It's hinged on him this year and will hinge on him moving forward. If he can come back and play and continue to play at this level, then I still think the Brooklyn Nets are the favorite. How does this de deal shake out for you, Zach? I'm just excited we got it. This is a big deal. <laughs> it is Look, happening. Someone, someone behind the scenes involved with this yesterday told me, I don't know what's going to happen, but I can tell you this. This is where I'm leaning. If the Nets get Everything or almost everything in addition to Simmons, yeah. there will be a trade. This two first round picks. Now we'll see what the protections are in this and that. Two first round picks recouping some of what they traded for James. Remember, they traded all their picks into perpetuity basically for James Harden and Seth Curry, who Joel Embiid loves and has a great chemistry with. And Simmons. And Drummond, a good backup center, who's been, yep. by the way, the best backup for Joel Embiid probably that he's ever had. I think that's as close to, quote-unquote, everything as the Nets were going to get here. And I, I think, they, look, both teams got what they wanted. I think it's a good trade for Brooklyn and a good trade for Philly. So I want to go to the other side now. We focus a lot on the James Harden side of this, and we're going to be digging into this more all show long. But, Shanae, as a big, how do you see Ben Simmons fitting with the Brooklyn Nets? I think it's really fascinating here because I think balance. When we had the big three, there was no balance. It was all offense, no defense. And one thing I love about Ben Simmons is his defensive prowess, his ability to be positionless. And then you get these rebounds and you go. And guess what? He's going to have one job. Find Kevin Durant, another job hopefully on the road. Find Kyrie Irving. And so I think this is not a horrible scenario for either party. And I'd be remiss to not mention the James Harden effect, if I may, because, I mean, as we see Ben, I mean, that's, that's what I love about him, you know, his tenacity. He brings a lot of intangibles to the game. He's led the league in a, a, you know, a number of categories defensively, like deflections and also getting steals. The pace of the game is faster. So imagine KD with an increased pace and someone that catches a ball and can throw it from the corner of his shoulder all the way to KD running down, spotting up where you know you can't double him. You know That's going to be a dangerous, lethal scenario. The James side, I think, is equally fascinating. Mm. Just because Joel Embiid has been waiting for a guard that can dominate but also can space the floor. James Harden is that guard. He really is. I think, uh, obviously, it's contingent on him, you know, finding his game quickly, as we've seen him be able to do. But I love this. That pick and roll is going to be wild. You've got the step back three if you, uh, you know, shade versus Joel Embiid. Or you can get... By Kia, here's your host, Malika Andrews. TikTok, my friends, I'm Malika Andrews, and we are just hours away from the trade deadline with the potential James Harden, Ben Simmons blockbuster trade looming. Are your Woj notifications turned on? Because mine sure are. We already have some moves per Woj, a four-team deal that'll send Serge Ibaka to the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks, Dante DiVincenzo to the Kings, Marvin Bagley to the Pistons, and then Goran Dragic, he's on his way to San Antonio, but Woj reports he's expected to negotiate a buyout. So, welcome to NBA Today. We're with you for three hours hours and we have all of our reporters insiders and analysts stopping by so let's break down some trades I'm here with Zach Lowe, Shanae Agumake, Richard Jefferson and Kendrick Perkins and we're going to get to the entire panel here in just a second but I want to start first by bringing in senior NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski so Woj thank you so much for joining us on a very busy day I want to start with your report on a potential James Harden Ben Simmons trade and the multi-million dollar question really where does it stand uh, Malika, today is really the first day that Brooklyn and Philadelphia really started to seriously engage each other 
trade ideas on a possible trade. Uh, that's been ongoing today. It may continue right up to the trade deadline at three o'clock. But uh, listen, there, there's some real, listen, there's motivation on both sides to figure out if there's a way to get a deal done. James Harden wants to trade to the Sixers. Uh, and Philadelphia believes that if they don't trade for him today, they'll be able to get him in free agency. The price could be very different then because they'd have to create cap space, what it would cost for the assets. But both Brooklyn and Philadelphia are engaged today. Obviously, Ben Simmons would be a part of any uh, deal, but it's beyond Ben Simmons. How much is Philly willing to give up uh, for James Harden in the short term here and, and weigh that versus what might be at the end of the season? And Brooklyn, do they want to go forward with this season and try to win a championship with Harden, who clearly does not want to be there anymore. Interesting. All right. In your report on this potential trade, you also wrote about both teams weighing the risks of trading James Harden and Ben Simmons. So what are the risks and rewards that Brooklyn and Philly are considering here? It, it's really what either could get back in the trade and what they have to give up. Philadelphia certainly wants to keep as many pieces as they can in a trade. And Brooklyn wants to get back value for the deal they made just a year ago with Houston. Uh, but I think for you know, the, 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 the Nets, um, you know, the idea that, uh, you know, they would st sell short on James Harden right now is really a way to over, you know, getting him back on the court with Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, uh, probably after the All-Star break uh, when Durant comes back. And, and listen, in the short term with Ben Simmons, how soon is he ready to play? How impactful? Could he be this season? They do want to win a championship this season, but they've got Durant signed long term now. And, and that's certainly at the top of their priorities. I think there's a place today for, the, for these two teams to meet on a deal. Mm. It's a question ultimately of whether they get there. But for the first time, really beginning this morning, uh, there's an engagement back and forth. And so we've got a couple hours to see whether they can pull it off. And we will be monitoring that engagement closely, Woj. But I do want to switch gears because earlier today you reported that four-team trade between the Kings, the Bucks, the Clippers, the Pistons. What's the most significant effect of this trade? Well, I think for the defending champions, bringing in Serge Ibaka, a, a player who gives them, you know, some insurance on uh, their front line, Brooke Lopez, uh, is he going to uh, be back effective this year? Abaka gives them just another big body. And the Kings, Dante DiVincenzo, that's a terrific pickup for them. They can sign him to an extension in the offseason. And listen, this is a, a, a team in Milwaukee uh, that, that was a, a, a position of need. They get it done. Tremendous cost savings for the Clippers um, who uh, you know continue to retool their roster and, and and with the idea that Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, uh, whether it's this year or next year, you know, that they've got a, a championship supporting cast around them. Absolutely. And also, Woj, I, I can't let you go and not ask about the Lakers. So what is their current mindset in regards to possibly trading Russell Westbrook before the deadline in just under two hours? Uh, it is very unlikely. Uh, I'm told they're not engaged uh, on the Russell Westbrook front. Obviously, we've talked about it a lot. $47 million owed him next season. You know, they made a decision this summer to trade for him. They traded a first-round pick. They traded some very other young tradable assets. And they're left really, you know, discussing deals around the edges. Uh, role players who could come in. You know, maybe some guards who could make uh, an impact on this team. But the idea of a dramatic makeover for this Laker team at the deadline and one that would include Russell Westbrook just very unlikely, Malika. Woj, thank you so much for your time. We know you are the busiest man at the company today. Really appreciate it. We'll see you back here in just a little bit. All right, so given what we just heard from Adrian Wojnarowski, it does beg the question, are these indirect conversations a bad look for Harden that would make it so that he's on the move for the second time asking out of a situation in two years? Perk, I want to start with you there. No, how does it make Harden look bad, right? Like, think about it. Harden gave up so much that he built 
in Houston, since Clutch City, to come to Brooklyn for one reason and one reason only. And that's not to deal with a reality show, which has been going on. That's to win the championship. And so James shouldn't be ashamed of a damn thing. He should want to be out. And if I'm if I'm if I'm in his position, I'm looking and say, you know what? I came here, thought that these guys were starving for a championship.